Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome to Autografool. Well, it's not every day that somebody invites you to take a glimpse into the future, but I've come here just outside of Munich with Jonas to take a look at what can realistically be described as a little peek into it. This is the Audi Urban Sphere. If that name sounds slightly familiar to you, that's because it belongs to the Audi Sphere family of cars, the Sky Sphere, the Grand Sphere, and now latest of all, the Urban Sphere. Audi's attempt to have a look into what some of the potential iterations of transportation might look like. Now, okay, I get it. Concept cars. Is it ever coming? Is it ever going to be reality? Will the urban sphere actually be something that you're ever going to see on the road and I will ever get to test drive? Let's take a closer look and find out. Well, the first thing that obviously has to be mentioned about this car is its pure scale. 5 meters 51 in length or 216 inches. This thing is massive. In actual fact, it's the largest car that Audi has ever produced, both on the interior and the exterior. So you might be thinking, well, then it's definitely never gonna be made. Come on, that's just a pure concept. But no, actually, the basis of this car is the PPE, the premium electric chassis. So not only is it being used here, but you will see this on future cars as well. The e-tron's gonna come out, it won't, look this big, but this is a very real proposition. So on top of the dreaming that's featuring here, there are clear practical applications. I do love concept cars, I have to be honest, because it used to be the case when you'd attend motor shows that what you saw in terms of concept was largely just designers going crazy. Needless to say, the price of putting together concept cars is astronomic. But more and more, what you find is because that process is so expensive, what you see does translate to actual production. Now, obviously market specific with variations, but lots of the features that you see here today will be featured on production models, if not this very car itself. So let's take a look at what the future says to us about the front of cars. Now we're being assisted today by a very friendly chap from Audi called Jürgen, and he's the guy with the controls. Obviously being a concept, not full production, I can't make a lot of these things work for myself. So he has the controls and he'll be helping me show you some of these features, just so you know who I'm talking to. This entire front is a really nice callback still to the days of the internal combustion engine. I think from a design perspective, it's a real challenge for car designers to know what to do with the grill area. Electric batteries still require an awful lot of cooling, but not nearly as much as internal combustion engines. And because of that, more and more, you're going to be seeing solid grills. But from a design perspective, that doesn't actually look that great. So what Audi have done here is they've turned this entire panorama into a visual display that you can adapt and modify and utilize yourself. But because of this really great black texturing, you still have the ability to have that visceral feel that you would get from a standard car. Now, if you're looking at this and saying, ah, but come on, batteries still need cooling. Yes, they do. And that's what this vent underneath is designed to achieve. At the moment, what you can see is the standard light display as if we're driving down the road. But just to give you an idea of what's possible here, first of all, let's see what would happen if we're indicating. And there we go. You can see just one example of how this can be utilized. But it's obviously not only this. I'm sure you can immediately get a sense of the possibilities. As we come further over, you can see how the entire front can be used, for example, as a warning sign if you're coming up on a hazard. Now, because of the studio lights, that doesn't look quite as impressive as it would in the darkness, but I'm sure you can get the idea. That's got really interesting implications for just some of the innovations that we're already seeing across brand new cars in terms of how they're using light to interact more digitally with the space that they occupy. If you haven't seen our recent review of Audi's S8, then you can get a really good sense of how some of this light technology already today is starting to present in production cars. But this represents a really exciting future possibility. Round at the side, the story is all about this wheelbase. 3.4 meters of it, or 133 inches. That is the longest wheelbase ever on an Audi. And despite the fact that this PPE platform will be used for other cars, they are not going to feature a wheelbase quite this dramatic. Now, what that does to the interior space of the car, we're gonna take a look at in just a second. But look at the visual presence this car has, not least because of these 24-inch wheels. 
obviously uniquely designed just for this car. But if you're thinking, oh, I wonder if those are the biggest wheels that Audi's ever produced. The answer would be no. Audi have actually made one bigger wheel for a car. And I'm interested to know, can any one of you guys name that car? Let us know in the comments below. I think you might be a bit surprised. The charge points here at the rear, I did arm and ar as to whether it was worth talking about the platform on that basis, because of course it's a concept, so the numbers feel a bit meaningless. But it is important because this platform is going to be used definitely for production models. And that's why we know that you can fit a massive array of batteries into this. So for this car, the projected range should be somewhere in the region of around about 400 miles. Again, I don't know how realistic that actually is, real world, actual production. But the reason for that is the massive size of floor that you have available to you. And clearly that's very important because it does give you an idea as to what kind of mileage you're likely to be able to get in future cars using this platform. Fingers crossed. Audi have a phrase that I find quite useful and it's intelligent coordinated technology. And I think that's nicely displayed, nicely displayed, nicely displayed at the rear of this vehicle. I think we've passed through the era on which people just put things on cars to see how they would add up and much more moving into one where everything in the car has to integrate into one whole. So yes, visually the presence of the rear of this car is important. As you can see, we have a lot of those grille details in terms of the nice texture coming to the back here as well. Very important on a car that's this massive at the rear. But they've still found a nice way of answering that. Look at these air diffusers at the back. They really do add a very welcome touch of visual interruption to the bulk of the rear. But really the story here is all about these lights. So as with the front, we can texture these and use them to different effect. And as we've already seen in cars like the new A8, there's the ability to make them interactive to their environment. So your proximity to them will actually change how they interact and what they can do. And as with the front, you can see how this whole surface can be used to change the look and feel of the vehicle, but more importantly, the way it interacts to other road users. One meter 78 or 70 inches in height, the size of this vehicle is matched equally dramatically in terms of its size horizontally as it is vertically. Now, one meter 78, regular viewers will know, is or was exactly the same height as me. I'm starting to wonder if maybe I've shrunk a bit. That's sad, but you can see the scale and the sweep of this vehicle is designed to have a very dramatic visual presence on the road. That sleek sidelines with absolutely no door handles or any form of door furniture whatsoever is designed to take a little bit away from the massive bulk of the car, try and make it a little bit more dynamic visually. And I think it works. I'm always intrigued to know how much of this translates between concepts and actual production. But I think we're going to be seeing an awful lot more of this detail here in particular. These are digital side mirrors and clearly they're becoming more and more common. It's always difficult, I think, from a design perspective. People like that feature on a car and it does add quite a lot to it digitally. So you don't want to do away with it completely. Some sports cars have digital solutions that you really can't see and aren't pronounced. This wing effect, I think, is a nice compromise. It still puts something that you're expecting to see there, but it's much more efficient from an aerodynamic standpoint, and it still looks pretty elegant. But now we come to the real fun and excitement. It's time to take a look inside. Well, we know that we have no door furniture, so how do you gain entry into this car? Well, the answer is, of course, technological. And these doors are being opened for us by Jürgen, helping us at the moment. You can see the red welcome lights on the floor and also the step that glides out from underneath the car to make access even easier. So the answer to how you would get into this car, unbelievably or not, the car recognizes the way in which you walk. So the Bee Gees, for example, would do very well getting into this car. But if you're a horse rider or you're planning on skiing for the weekend, the car might say, but that's not what I'm looking for. Once you've opened this car and seen the massive amount of interior space, because of course it has no B pillars whatsoever, you will also notice that the seat can come forwards and present to you to make it even easier to gain access. And Jürgen's just gonna make that happen for us. There we go. Now I think it's very important to mention that Audi have gone to an extraordinary length of effort 
to make sure that all of the materials used within this concept are recyclable and sustainable and they're all kept individual and separate, which means that their life after being featured in the car is highly recyclable as well. Now, it's worth mentioning the only place in which you can say isn't 100% sustainable necessarily is in the seat fabric. This is wool. Well, I think it's about time we had a look in here, don't you? So, what messages am I getting from the car of the future? Well, the first and most important things to note are that this wasn't only designed by Audi. This was designed in concert between their offices in Beijing and, of course, their offices in Ingolstadt, but they also had significant input from their customer base. Now, that makes me smile. Any of you who occasionally like to watch The Simpsons might remember an episode where Homer Simpson designed a car. So when I read the briefing notes on this and they said there had been heavy customer engagement helping them design it, I thought, ooh, that sounds interesting. But what does come out of it is that what the customers fed back is that more than anything else, what they wanted was a sense of space and freedom with inside the vehicle. So those things have been really important. Not only space and freedom, but also the ability to interact with that space and freedom as the individual user wants. Not then feeling as if they're necessarily part of an entire experience if they don't want to be, but that they could be if they do. So technology is absolutely at the heart of this car. And it deals with some interesting challenges particularly well, I think. Light and space if you want it. So you can see this massive exterior panorama that's available to us both through the sides and the roof. So light and space absolutely flooding in here if that suits you. But thanks to digital technology, all of that can be dropped through automatic darkening screens if you don't. And there are more than a few design cues taken from aircraft travel. So if I could get Jürgen to put the seat back into its regular driving position, then I'll show you one of those. Look at that. Brilliant. Now, let's say, for example, I'm taking a trip and I like the person next to me. Well, you can see that that's easy and comfortable for me to be sharing an experience with them. But supposing maybe I need to catch up on a bit of sleep or maybe I just don't like them that much. Well, this is the solution to that. These spheres, obviously the name comes from the concept itself, allow you to feel that you're in your own space and separate to everybody else. I'm hoping if it makes it to production they use a slightly quieter motor than that. All of the seats can rotate round and the reason that's even possible is that this is an autonomous level four driving vehicle. Now, if you're not familiar with autonomous vehicles, Currently, standardly, most of the self-driving cars that we have on the road are around about a level two. The reason for that is that it's very complicated legally and from an infrastructure standpoint to get higher than this. So what does that mean in the real world? It means that you, the driver, are still very much responsible for the car. You have to make the decisions. The car can assist you, but you are responsible. Once you hit level three, and there are a couple of cars that are entering into that bracket, you retain responsibility, but the car in theory is capable of making those decisions for you. We're already starting to see that technology on our roads and in some cars. Level four, which is what this car represents, is a much more challenging proposition. I would say largely legally. The reason being that the car is now taking responsibility even though you, the driver, have overriding responsibility, in principle, anything that can happen to the car can be dealt with by the car. Now, as you will be aware, if you live somewhere like Munich or London or Paris or New York, putting that responsibility into the hands of a car is a minefield because you don't have the infrastructure in place to be able to deal with it. One place where that is not such a challenge is China. And the reason for that is amongst the much growth and building that's experienced there, they've built entirely new digital cities and not small propositions, cities that in some cases are on the size and scale of something like a Detroit or a Chicago, really big propositions. And that allows us to see how an autonomous level four vehicle can actively work in a real world environment. But that for now is an environment that has been built specifically for this to function. If you're curious, 
there is a level five and a level five is literally where there is no capacity or need for anyone to interact with the car whatsoever. The car makes all of its own choices. In terms of time framework, level twos are on the streets today. Level threes are starting to come on the streets but are still not mass model. Nobody is driving a level four currently. That's what this is. But for time frame, you might start hearing about these on the streets in some places within this decade. Level five, I think we're gonna to have to wait a little bit longer for. But to all extents and purposes, if you have a level four car, it's gonna feel pretty much as if it takes care of everything all by itself. So I'm sorry if that's a bit too much talking, but that helps you to understand the interior. The point being that everything here is much more about your holistic experience as a passenger and a lot less about your experience of needing to understand everything that is happening with the driving. Jürgen is working really hard to listen to me to make sure that he knows what I'm after. Look at this, so you can see just one idea of how you can experience hospitality within this setting that works for all four people. Again, everything is supposed to feel very relaxed and very comfortable. So yes, it's a concept. Will you see everything? Not necessarily, but you will see a lot of things. Take this for example. This screen that's built into the back, this is actually tracking my retina movement through it. And if I look at marketplace, there we are, it will register the fact I've looked at it. If I look over at health, it can see that I'm looking at it. So the system is designed for me to be able to interact with it with as little effort on my part as possible. Obviously, digital interaction is at the heart of this car's design. So you can see here how Audi have built in their digital assistant into the car. Everything about this space is designed to make it as intuitive and relaxing as possible. So because of that, this might at first glance not look like the most intuitive system, but the idea is that as you get to know it, which hopefully should be pretty quickly, you don't actually even physically need to touch it. It's most just, m most just? motion sensitive, which means it understands what I'm doing and we both learn each other. There's also a touch sensor built in here. So as I get the experience I want come up, I don't really even have to look or think about it. I just can even gently tap on the side. Now, perfect example of that is what happens to me when I get into this car. Everything about the experience here is designed to make things nicer for me. So if I look at the health app and then I say, I wonder how I'm doing. I can tap underneath here without even Let's bothering to look. Your stress level. And it's looking straight at me to see how stressed I am. It's thinking about it. What do you think, Jonas? Now, I'll tell you what's really interesting about that result is that we had to do two takes of this, one so you can see me, one so you can see the screen. I am in fact less stressed now than I was earlier, Jonas. So the car must have relaxed me because the car has decided that I am, I'm pretty good. I'm halfway between stressed and asleep, I assume. It has decided that I could use a bit of relaxation. So it's suggested to me that I should relax and if I want, I can now begin a meditation. So again, for that to work, I just use my eyes to look at start meditation, tap on the sensor, and off we go together. That's nice. Now, if all of that seems a little bit silly to you, you really shouldn't underestimate the power of such things. If you've just gone through an unbelievably stressful meeting, I don't know, let's say a divorce hearing just for fun, you can imagine that this might actually really, really change your day. So I don't want to say this is silly at all. In actual fact, I think this could be really a great step forwards. If you were looking at this car and thinking, man, that's great. Why don't I see more cars without B pillars? Well, apart from the fact that that's quite technically challenging because you have to put an awful lot of strength into the roof, there is one other glaring problem. Most times you see cars without B pillars the doors have to interact somewhat like this, which is to say that the front one overlays the back one, keeping the back one in place. The obvious challenge with that is that if you want to get in the back, you have to open both doors. 
Now that's not a big deal in a car like this where you're not doing your own driving. Except for one thing, what happens when it's raining heavily or snowing? Well, the answer is your car is going to get very wet. So Audi have told us that if this car comes to production, they will have a solution for that. But for now, as you can see, if you're pulling up to pick up the kids, you're going to get a pretty wet interior if you're experiencing quite a lot of winter weather. But come on, I'm picking holes there. I think it's also worth mentioning at this point because you might be thinking, but where would the kids go? Obviously, you're not sitting in the front. That's for the guys who are driving you around. You're sitting back here in perfect luxury. But you still have to pick up the kids. Well, don't worry, Audi haven't forgotten them. If you have a look in the back, you can see that there's space for a couple of extra passengers. Now, obviously, this is a concept. So this is just to say you can fit extra people in here. But again, if this car comes through to production, that space might be a lot more adaptable, more in the way of a Q7, so that rear space could be used either for extra seating or for luggage storage. Now, this car is all about the experience in the back, but there are so many features in here which we do expect to see coming into standard production models right across the line. I think this one is particularly worth drawing your attention to, as the way in which many materials can be used in future. As you can see, this looks really nice as just a plain surface. But if Jürgen can help us by switching it on, you can see how this becomes a display surface. Now this is done through light projection. But you can see just how well that's executed and delivered. And it really changes the way that you think about materials usage within cars. There are so many opportunities for changing the way that we interact with our environment and our space and change the way in which we think about our vehicles. Now, concepts are just a chance to dream, but from everything I've heard here today, especially from Audi's assistant, there's every reason to think that a lot of this technology will be finding its way through to the entire Audi lineup. But not only that, I also have a relative amount of confidence that this car will actually make it in some guys or another onto actual roads as a level four autonomous vehicle. And that's incredibly exciting. It's going to be launched at the Beijing Auto Show. By the time you see this, that may very well have happened. And that will be the first step towards finding out whether or not this car can have an actual market. But the technologies that we see here today will be technologies that we will all have the opportunity to interact with in whatever car we drive going into the future. And for that reason, it looks very exciting to me indeed. Thanks very much for watching. If you've liked us, please subscribe. If you have any comments and questions, please put them below and do check out our other Audi reviews. We've got some really nice stuff about cars that are actually on the road today that you can buy, well, chip shortage permitting as soon as you like.